Welcome to another episode of the Movie Brothers. I'm Ant. This is Kev. What's up, my brother? What's happening, my brother? <laughs> Good to see you, man. <laughs> Likewise. Good to see you guys, too. Uh, thank you for joining us, as always. We are reviewing a Spike Lee joint for you today. Uh, the film is called The Sweet Blood of Jesus. <laughs> uh, this film is rated R. Mm -hmm. um, Hard. Are. Very hard. Uh, <laughs> has a runtime of two hours and three minutes. Uh, this film is uh, a thriller, I guess you could could say. Uh, in it, you have this character, a professor by the name of Dr. Hess Green, uh, who becomes cursed by an ancient African artifact, and uh, this curse makes him addicted to blood. But he's not a vampire. I'm gonna let kinda, you tell it, cause if a person yeah. is drinking blood, then that kind of makes them a vampire. But you know, yeah. hey. Yeah, that's neither here nor there yet. Uh, this movie was, as Ant said, directed by Spike Lee. He of the 40 Acres and a Mule, Mule yep. film works fame, okay? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> inimitable Spike Lee, done a bunch of great things. Uh, this film stars Stephen Tyrone Williams and Zara Abrahams. Mm -hmm. Let's get into it. Yeah, let's get into it, y'all. Hey, um, first of all, I got to give full disclosure. Uh, you are listening to uh, Spike Lee's number one fan, maybe. He is. Um, I have uh, my little Spike Lee poster that hangs in my office. He does. Um, yes, and I have all kinds of uh, Spike Lee DVDs and Spike Lee autographs and he all that kind them. of stuff. <clears throat> I'm his number one fan. But even his number one fan cannot save him from this mess. Yeah, so. <laughs> yes, I hate to say it, but we got a stinker, y'all. Um, th this film is a modern reinterpretation of Bill Gunn's black exploitation film, Ganja and Hess. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, Bill Gunn co-wrote the script with right. Spike Lee for this film. Right. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the whole black exploitation era of American cinema, essentially this happened during the 70s where a lot of movies and films were being made uh, that featured African American actors, uh, had a lot of African American music in the soundtrack, mm -hmm. uh, financed and directed by mm -hmm. <laughs> white people. Okay, <laughs> uh, go figure. <laughs> um, but, you know, I have always had a love-hate relationship with Spike. Uh, at his very best, he is a phenomenal filmmaker, mm -hmm. uh, responsible for such classics as Do the Right Thing, yes. uh, Mo' Better Blues, Malcolm, uh, X. Malcolm X. I mean, come on. Uh, at his best, he's at the top of his game. At his worst, he is something else. Okay? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how to classify that, but he is something else. Um, the fact that he attempts to take a black exploitation film uh, such as Ganja and Hiss, mm -hmm. okay, and try to translate that into something that we in the 21st century can, uh, you know, can can watch and you know find palpable, uh, that is that's that's very admirable on his part, okay. Um, the thing is, is that it makes me wonder, as I'm sitting there watching this film, just how much ganja <laughs> was Spike smoking when he made it. Yeah, uh, I don't know, Kev. And, uh, you know, for me, y'all, I don't What do you want first? You want the good or the bad? Let's start with the good, okay? okay? Uh, first of all, this film has uh, more crack uh, than I've ever seen, probably since New Jack City. But I, is crack. But I ain't talking about crack rock. I'm talking about booty crack, okay? Uh, is crack. That, that's where that hard R is coming from. It's it's lots of nudity going on and, you know, lots of stuff popping off uh, when typically nudity takes place. Right. Uh, very beautiful women, I must say. That, yeah. I mean, got Quality crack. <laughs> <laughs> As Kev said, Quality crack. Uh, yes, that that is in this film. Um, you know, uh, Bruce Hornsby uh, does the uh, the musical score for this film, who I happen to like. Some people don't care for as much, um, but uh, I didn't hey, say I don't like Bruce Hornsby. I mean, I like Mandolin Rain as much as the next <laughs> man. I just don't like Bruce Hornsby 
scoring this film. Okay, all right. Well, we'll agree to disagree on that. I actually happen to like it, but that's probably the, those are one of the few things that I did like about this film. Uh, the acting is terrible. Uh, it's just terrible, Kev, in this film. When did Charles uh, Barkley get here? You see how I did that, man? I just, <laughs> I just, I just channeled Barkley, okay. just like that, man. Uh, but it's it's a hot mess, um, you know, because Spike is doing a satire on the whole black exploitation thing. It's hard for me to tell at times whether the 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 bad acting it was intentional, right, or not. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Either way, it really kind of goes bad pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, I, I do have a public service announcement from all black preachers across the country that they wanted me to give for this episode. Hit us with it. Um, so, um, PSA from black preachers to all of Hollywood. Stop portraying them as caricatures in all your doggone movies where they're doing a bunch of yeah and hooping and hollering and all that kind of stuff and ain't said nothing. It's tired. <laughs> it's played. They sick of seeing it. Actually, I'm sick of seeing it. Too, Kev. Not all black um, preachers sound like they're introducing Randy Watson. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sexual chocolate. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. So you know, I actually happen to have a black pastor, and he That's sounds right. nothing like what you know typically these black pastors get preachers. And get my portrayed. father happens to be a black pastor, so <laughs> and he sounds nothing like that. Yeah. So please stop. Let's move on and do something else. That joke is tired. Now. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Ganja and Hess, okay, the film on uh, which this film, this movie, the current movie was uh, based on, um, used vampirism, okay, yes, I said it, vampirism, vampirism. Okay? okay, as a metaphor for everything from black assimilation to cultural imperialism to organized religion, uh, it, it basically touches on all of those things, and, um, Perhaps in our attempt to, and I'm trying to make sense you, of this you read, for you. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm trying to make sense I, of this I'm for you. I'm applauding you, actually. As Perhaps, you, as you, yeah. and I'm trying to make sense of it. Perhaps in our attempt to assimilate, okay, and live in the Hamptons like this particular character does, okay, make a lot of money, okay, uh, we are willing to devour and drink the blood of our own, okay, uh, in order to live a superior lifestyle. Okay, <laughs> am I Sex reading? Am I reading too much into it? Sexual chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I, bravo, Kev. I mean that that was well said. I I, I don't know if I agree with any of it, <laughs> uh, but I do applaud you for at least attempting. Uh, and I and man, I might even invite you to the Spike Lee fan club. Would you accept an invitation if I invited you? You might get fifty percent of me. Well, no, I need. We got to get all of you, or none of you, man. Uh, which is it? Um, but um, you know, hey, I, I, it was hard for me to really to get anything out of this film. If I had to try to describe it to you, I'd say give me. I take Red Hook Summer meets Vampire in Brooklyn, attempting to do Black wow. Dynamite that explodes all over the place in a hot freaking mess, which is a very, very bad thing. And uh, you, didn't have to throw, you didn't have to throw Eddie under the bus like that. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to do Eddie like that. Hey, they did that Jack, that they, they did the Jack Leg Preacher in Vampire in uh, Brooklyn too. Yeah, well. Anyway. Okay. Um, we want to put some points on this thing here. Yeah, we might as well. Let's do it, let's do it, man. We might as well do that. Um, I have to say, props do go out to Spike Lee for his Kickstarter campaign that basically got the financing in place for this movie, okay? I think that that was a, a very, um, very cool thing to do mm -hmm. and may show signs of, of where this industry is actually headed in the future. Yeah. I don't know, okay? But I think anything that enables black filmmakers and filmmakers in general to get their voices out there, you know, I think that's a good thing. Yeah, okay? no doubt. Um, if he'd gone all the way and truly embraced the black exploitation and horror elements of this film and just kind of updated it in a way that was much more, I don't know, interesting? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then I think we'd, we'd have had a better product on our hands. As it is right now, we're left scratching our heads at the end of this thing. It feels low budget. It looks low budget. It sounds low budget, um, and you know, 
if it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, then it is a duck. And I'm sorry, Aunt Bruce Hornsby score does absolutely nothing for this film. Um, I'm sorry, Aunt. I can't give this any, this movie anything else but a three. Okay. All right, Kev. Tell us how you really feel. Um, you know, for me, um, yes, applause on Spike's creativity and how he got the film done. Mm -hmm. Applause for releasing the film on Vimeo. Um, right. That was cool. Uh, while we're talking about Vimeo, uh, give me my $10 back because <laughs> that's what you charged me to see the doggone movie. I ain't too happy about that. Uh, it, it, I'm Spike's number one fan. At least you got to watch it at home and didn't have to go to a theater to watch it. Yeah, that's true. I did get to sit in my drawers on the couch and watch the film, so I guess points for that. Uh, but um, otherwise, it's a hot mess. Um, I, I can't give this film it, anything higher than a two. It's a two out of ten for me, y'all. <laughs> wow, it pains that me is to say the lowest that. score that Ant has ever given. No, a that's movie. not the lowest. Yeah, I think it is, man. No, Twelve Years got a one from me. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't start you, that. Twelve Don't. Years got a one, yes. Heck and yeah. this got a two. Yes. Not now, Kev. I can't do this right now, man. Hey, y'all. Oh. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to like us on Facebook. Or follow us on Twitter at the Movie Brothers, and make sure you subscribe to this channel. Uh, once again, I'm Ant. This is Kev. We are the Movie Brothers. This is the place, the, the one and place. only place where we bring you nothing but the real, real on the real. real.